day with a little activity. We got the activity going on. His phone's ringing. My phone's ringing. <laughs> we're going to, do, do, we're about to go live. We're about to go live. We're about to go, can we get off the phone for just a second? Hey, y'all, we're off the phone now. <laughs> Man, oh, I don't even know where to start. Um, I have this thing I want to do, and it has to do with backing the blue. Today, today, America is mourning the loss of four U.S. Marshals yesterday in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now, I've been to Charlotte, North Carolina, and it's a great small town. That is. That has grown to be kind of like Marietta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. You can kind of compare Charlotte to Marietta. Great community to grow up in, great community to work, a lot of jobs, a, a lot of things happening in that area. But yesterday, something happened in that area that should never happen in America. U.S. Marshals, a lot of them, a lot of them, and we're going to share some pictures with y'all. But a lot of, a lot of uh, iron power got together. They had on their vest. They had on their gear. They had on their riot gear, basically. And they went to serve a warrant. Now, somebody that I trust, because he's college educated, he's smarter than me, he was giving me statistics last night. And he said, do you know that 75% of the crime in America is committed by 12% of the population? That doesn't surprise me. That's normal. And he said it's repeat offenders. Yeah. It's repeat offenders. It's repeat offenders. It's just like, here I go, in New York City. The judicial system stinks. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say that. But we have, we have a person who took a hammer to her Blackberry and deleted tons and tons of things and nothing was done about it. Nobody right. cared. And then we have another one who had a laptop full of all kinds of incriminating things. Nobody cared. But then we have a man who is hitting the polls very high and doing very well in an election and he's sitting in a courtroom. The judicial system sucks. <laughs> I'll just say it. You have this, these criminals that kill these U.S. Marshals, habitual violators with automatic rifles. I understand that they're, and you're a gun guy. Yeah. You're a gun guy. I understand, uh, I, I want to have a gun. I want everybody to have a gun. I want you to protect yourself. But four U.S. Marshals will be laid to rest and four others fighting for their lives because they just went to serve a warrant on a habitual violator, a criminal who uh, decided instead of just answering the door to come out with a, is it AK-57, AK-15, AK 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 whatever, it, it's a, da -da -da -da. you know, yeah. you can hear the shots. And um, I'm sitting there talking to a guy about it last night and he's going, in tears because we're watching as the procession comes and brings these four bodies to the hospital. The hospital entry was lined with nurses and doctors honoring these four fallen back the blue. For God's sake, y'all, start supporting our police force. Mm -hmm. Start supporting arresting people who do stupid things. Start supporting telling your judges to put them in jail for a long time. Don't spank them and send them home. No. We are getting in so much trouble. And when you look at these, you know, the, the mayor of Charlotte was speaking and she's like, you know, we live in this safe community. We have everything that's good and, and right about Charlotte. And then we have to bury four, four, yeah. and four more fighting for their lives. And it's crazy. They just went to serve a warrant. Yeah. So what's wrong, Paul? What's wrong? Well, I mean, it's a good question. I mean, Spank them. Spank them, send them home. I'm kind of answer because I didn't know about this until we started talking. So it, it's just a sign of the deterioration of our country. Absolutely. You know, Proverbs says, and I know I've said this before, and I'm sorry, but the wisdom that's in Proverbs that could be applied to our society if we would, if we would do that mm -hmm. and we actually learn from the past. Most people don't know a lot about history. Yep. Okay. And history is so important. You take all the legendary investors throughout time, history is important. Mm -hmm. But there's a way that seems right to a man and in the end it leads to death. So one of the problems that we have is, is we've got a society that wants to virtue signal and give somebody a second chance, right? Oh, yeah. Now there are yeah. people who deserve a second oh, yeah, chance. Oh sure, sure. But the one thing that we should have in society is one, 
all of our officers should be paid a lot more. Oh my gosh. Okay? I think they, the average salary of these guys was between fifty and sixty thousand a year. They even detailed that. Yeah, and they so said they lost their lives for less than a lot of people make. Yeah, I mean they, they should be making one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year across the board because Absolutely. that's the core to our society. Yeah. And and put it to where they're they're putting their lives on the line. Mm -hmm. Obviously we find this now for our society mm -hmm. to protect mm -hmm. the rest of us, right? Sure, sure. Instead of sending all this money to Ukraine and, oh, and supporting all these woke agendas around the world, that's the first thing that we it's should do crazy. in society. The yeah. second thing that we should do is there should be severe consequences, mm -hmm. all right? If you kill an officer, it should be capital punishment immediately once you go through, right. you know, once a jury finds you guilty, mm -hmm. society should not be paying for that person to be put right. up in jail. Right. That person took a life, their second chance is over. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. In, in that now people have crimes of passion, that's a little mm -hmm. bit different situation. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. get caught up. But if you have somebody's come to serve you a warrant, you're a repeat criminal, it should be the death penalty. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be a lesson to the rest of society to say, look, there are lines that you cross, there is no going back. We're mm -hmm. not gonna take tax dollars and support right. you and feed you for and the rest get you of your a court-appointed attorney three times and yes. get you you know another hearing and another hearing and just ridiculous yeah. it's just it's ridiculous and it's not it's not the AK-47 of course the media is going to play on that oh, yeah. because this exactly. administration wants to take that away right it's not the weapons that kill people right I mean right. the weapons do but yeah. it's the people yeah, yeah, that yeah. are using them right and and we as an American citizenry still need to have the ability because mm -hmm. think about it you got a massive armed force, that's different. That is a major deterrence to keep people from invading our country. And as the geopolitical landscape is changing, and unfortunately the baby boomer generations had such incredible wealth through their generation, they're just oblivious. They're mm -hmm. whistling Dixie mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. graveyard mm -hmm. while our country is falling apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And unless they care enough about, you know, speaking out and making a difference instead of, you know, cruising five times a month, mm -hmm. Nothing against cruising. I'm just kind of mm. being, I, I, right. I'm being a little bit of a smart aleck to bring it home, right. just so people can pay attention. Mm -hmm. But you can retire and still make a difference in your community. But we have to wake up, mm -hmm. and this is a situation where, you know, there needs to be consequences, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in raising children, if there are clear boundaries, then and they they're disciplined when they cross those boundaries. The same thing should be applied in society. When mm -hmm. when you murder a police officer, and then you know, quite frankly, when a police officer walks up to the car, I mean, I got pulled over the other day. It scares me to death for him. I just was not paying attention. I was coming into East LJ and, and you know, just kind of thinking about the day and what mm -hmm. was going on. I saw the cop sitting there. And you were and speeding? Yeah. Oh, well, no. well I, I forget oh, no. that it drops from yes. 65 to 55. Yeah. That's funny that you said that because today you'll die laughing. I leave ball ground and I look at my clock, it's 8.04. Well, I know my timing to get here. Da, 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 da. And there's a place where the construction starts in Gilmer County where they're working in Whitestone, you know, mm -hmm. and it drops to 55. Well, at that point in time, there's already been two sheriff's cars in Pickens County with somebody pulled over and a city of Jasper car about to pull somebody over. And I'm all for it because I drive this every single day. And I ain't gonna tell how many days, but, but every single day, I'm going over the speed limit, five miles an hour over the speed yeah. limit. I watch it and I go five over. I, I have to stay in the slow lane, the old lady lane, because if you get in that fast lane, even to go around somebody, you're gonna get run over because yeah. you, know, you know what the people in the fast lane are doing? Yeah. 80, yeah. 85. They are. Seriously. And I said today, I was gonna call Donnie Craig, the sheriff of Pickens County, and say, I challenge you to ride with me to LJ one day and I want you to look at the crazies in traffic because there are crazies in traffic. Like you were just not paying attention and it dropped. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's not a biggie. But and there was I, nobody around. I was all by yeah. myself. When I'm coming to work every single day and I look and I'm going five over, if it's 65, I'm going 70. I'm speeding, yeah, but I'm not doing what the guy next to me who's blowing his horn and, you know, yeah. And I'm going, are you kidding me? And they go around me today, this little silver uh, SUV from, what county was he in? No, I think he had in God we trust on his car and I thought you better. <laughs> but That's but funny. he comes around me flying and there's a dump truck beside me and I'm terrified of dump trucks because yeah. I do not want to die under a load of gravel. Yeah. That is not my yeah. wish. Yeah. But, but when you say it dropped, it does drop 
just pay attention, people. And we don't often do that. Sometimes I don't. No, and I mean, and I, I, I actually, I actually pay more attention if I'm in a group of traffic. When I'm by myself, that's mm -hmm. when I get caught because I'm like, there's nobody around. I saw him. I actually just about started to wave when the blue lights went off, and I looked, <laughs> I looked down, and I was like, oh. I but here's the point. So this is the way I am. This is the way I've taught my kids. I pull over in a safe place, make them follow me. I pulled in over there at the Century 21 at mm -hmm. Teague Law Office. Right, right. I roll all the windows down, put my hands on the windshield. I've already got my concealed yeah. carry permit and all, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And he wasn't the friendliest individual on the face of the earth, but wow. I did my best to be yeah. Uh, yeah. respectful. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, he says, you know why I pulled you over? I said, yeah, because I'm a dumb butt. I wasn't paying attention <laughs> to what I was doing. And yeah. I know it drops. Yeah. I know you're there all the time writing tickets. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but the point being now, had he asked me, hey, can I search your car? Absolutely not without a warrant. Mm -hmm. I'm all for, mm -hmm. you know, and I have nothing to hide, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there are still boundaries that you have to have because right. you hear these stories about cops planting evidence. Oh, yeah. I don't, I really don't think that we're going to have that in, in our area, but yeah. the reality is that's a boundary that we have that the Constitution gives us, you know, you, you're, no, you're not going to search my mm -hmm. car. And that's what mm -hmm. I always tell my kids. I have nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. But if, if you want to get a warrant, I'll sit here, but yeah. I, you're not searching my car without a warrant. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's a, a level of respect mm -hmm. that you show because they're doing their job to protect society, right? Yep. And um, so. Have you ever watched the thing that I asked you this last time about the state troopers that you watch the chases? There, there's something on TV, on YouTube, and I can't remember the name of it exactly, but it, it, it's like if you're running from a Georgia state trooper at 135 miles an hour, you get the DA or the award, and DA doesn't stand for district attorney. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> dumb. Yeah. Dumb Dumb, <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb. But most of them die because most of yeah. them, they run until they wreck them, and most of them die. I'm like, how stupid could or you be? Or they kill somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Pull over. Just pull over and deal with it. Yeah. You did something stupid. Either they're in, most of, most of the people who we see this thing with, they either have an outstanding warrant, yeah. so they are already a criminal. They're not running because they were late to pick up their kids at daycare. Right. They're running because they're a criminal, they're driving without a license, they have no insurance, they're in a stolen car, a variety of things, or they're smoking pot. And um, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. We, I saw yesterday that they're trying to say now that marijuana is a dangerous drug. And I'm like, really? <laughs> well, it starts deteriorating your brain cells and eating your brain up from the first time you do it. And I'm like, really? It's dangerous, huh? Somebody just decided, somebody in the U.S. government just decided it's dangerous yesterday. Hey, I'm I'll, like, I'll tell you something funny about that. Uh, usually if they're on marijuana, according to a Denver cop, because I got to talking to him uh -huh. one time, so like, what's it like being a cop out here? Oh gosh, you know, can now you that imagine? Marijuana's legal, <laughs> yeah. He made the comment, he said, well, the good thing is, if it's a high-speed chase, we know it's alcohol. Yeah. He said, I've had a lot of slow-speed chases. He said, I follow a guy down the interstate going 20 miles an hour, and he pulled me over and looked at me like, what'd you pull me over for? It's like, because you're going 20 miles an hour and a yeah. 75. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. So That's funny. So you got a ticket, or yeah, did he write you a warning? No, 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 no. No, he no. gave you a ticket. He lit me it. up. And, wow, uh, wow. And I didn't know the young young kid. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, you know, he's doing his job. I mean, here's the thing. I, yeah. I guess I deserve it. And my yeah. insurance went up because of it. I wasn't yeah. that, you know, that, and that's one thing I'll tell you. They're always like, this will not go on your insurance. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, no. yeah. Insurance yeah, companies are. are looking for every reason yeah. to make them go yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah. when they tell you that, just smile and say, you don't yeah. know the process. This yeah. isn't how this works. Oh, no, so, no, no. I, well, I will say I deserved it. I didn't say anything, but I mean, I, yeah. I as far have I ever gotten a ticket in Gilmer County? Not that I'm somebody. It's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I think I've only been pulled well, over I, one time I before. can bless myself with I've gotten in ball ground. <laughs> Multiple choice. <laughs> <laughs> and we laugh because there's a group of us old ladies, and we've all gotten stopped. Yeah. And we laugh, and we're like, so now we're like, when we get a new policeman, we go and say, this is the car we drive. And yes, we're old ladies and we're always out doing stuff. We're usually delivering food to people. Yeah. So if you see us out doing something, give us a break. You know, yeah. not really. We don't really do that, but we think, you know, and maybe we'll bring you a peach cobbler, but, but they're doing their job. Yeah. They're doing their job. But I got tickled because I'm like, seriously? You know, I drive 150,000 miles a year to sell real estate, to go places, to do things. And everything I've ever gotten is within a mile of home. Yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. like, dang, <laughs> you know, maybe I should be everywhere but home. So, but, but anyway, um, today is a day to celebrate 
anybody who serves. Do you know the Cherokee County Sheriff's Department, big, huge department, can't hire enough people. I think they're paying 55000 a year. Well, I mean, we just saw that example. Four people died yesterday for about $55,000 well, a year. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Why, right? Why, why are you not paying more? Why are we paying Congress 149000 to sit up there and do nothing? Yeah, I mean, you, you, take, nothing. you take several of the government officials that are in without picking on specific, you know, uh, areas, but there are certain... Overpaid. There are certain government entities that have 10 and 12 people that are making well over 100000 and your administrative top heavy. And two of them could do what five of them are doing. You know, you can go to Home Depot and work without the risk of getting shot, without mm -hmm. the risk of defending yourself and then being mm -hmm. charged with murder. The risk yeah. of a cop, you know, and I think in our area it's a little bit better, but, but the risk that they carry, that income just doesn't compensate no, for it. No. So the ones that are doing it are doing it because they care about our society mm -hmm. and they want to make a difference in the lives of individuals you know, I've got a good friend that's, uh, that's a sheriff's deputy. I hadn't talked to him as much in the past couple of years, but he genuinely cares. There are other things mm -hmm. that he could do. So as a society, we need to be paying them a lot more, mm -hmm. right? And, and unfortunately, because of the fiscal... <laughs> Irresponsibility. 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 I, sorry, y'all. Yeah. The only word that came to mind was one that I really Better don't need say. to say. <laughs> But um, the fiscal irresponsibility of the government is driving inflation like crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and what people don't understand, since we've weaponized the U.S. dollar, that, that gives the international community a reason to replace the dollar as a global reserve currency. Well, you've got about 50% of the dollars that are outside the United States. And if we don't get ahead of this now, mm -hmm. one, I think we need to pass some legislation that institutions cannot buy residential housing. Mm -hmm. Um, please, 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 that has got to be done before BlackRock takes us over. Oh, well, I know. You I know, mean, I mean, here's they the, are yeah. doing it quickly and they're doing it quietly in communities where they just swoop in and they just, bam, it's gone. And then we wonder why your kids couldn't, yeah. couldn't find a place to rent for less than $2,200 yeah. a month. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, they'll get their due before it's over, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they will. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's going to take some time, but but the problem is is that do we that know who owns who, who controls that one company the blackrock uh, yeah. larry fink yeah so he's the the head of the company okay and his history uh i don't know a whole lot about his history I, you know I, I think he's a part of that world economic forum mm -hmm. and and everything that's associated with that i really don't know a lot about his history mm -hmm. um we know anything about his politics no i don't yeah i don't i, I, I have I, no idea i just know that they are now famous for destroying neighborhoods, and that's scary. Yeah. That's scary. Well, I mean, look, they're, they're doing what... They're investing wisely and destroying America quickly. So, so is, here, that, is that true? Yeah, well, yeah, so here's the problem. Are they investing wisely? I don't think so. In what world does it make sense to... You know, one of the things that I kind of was screaming about in 2007, it was like... I can't remember the data about how many homes we had selling over 500,000 at the time. And I'm like, look, there's just not enough income base in the community mm -hmm, to cover mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. Now, $500,000 house, there's people that would give anything to be able to buy mm -hmm, those homes mm -hmm, right now, mm -hmm. right? New construction prices are through the roof. So this is all because of central planning. Mm -hmm. So central planning is communism. I mean, think about that. Oh, yeah. Central Here's planning. So we have a central bank that's trying to do central planning. You've got politicians that have sold their souls for the money, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, hey, Sherry, I tell you what, I got this bill that I need to pass. Um, I'll take care of your kids forever. They'll come mm -hmm. work. So you've got really a fascism that's, that's involved. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not crooked, but it is crooked as it gets. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, yeah. it's crooked because here's the thing. Yeah. If you're a politician, you're there to serve the American people. You're not there to serve your own pockets, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, and when you're making one hundred seventy-five, two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year, right? You're not uh, you're not limited to insider trading. So what do you do? These companies are obviously going to come in and line your pockets mm -hmm. with working the legal system. There are things that need to be changed because you, you can overregulate a society, but the spirit of the law is to protect. Anyway, I'm not mm -hmm. going to go down that that path. But here's the thing: our politicians, their responsibility is to serve the people. Mm -hmm. 
it's not to serve the corporations. It's not to line your own pockets. Mm -hmm. It's not to line the pockets of your kids. But, but what we're doing as a society is we're not electing leaders that'll get up and be strong. I mean, even on a local level, we have some issues with the lack of leadership mm -hmm. as far as standing up and communicating, right? We're, we're letting division take place in our society instead of somebody standing up and saying, look, we have to come to a compromise, all right? I understand your point of view, and I understand your point of view, but how society works and even how a marriage works is there is compromise, mm -hmm. right? Everybody has to give a little bit of something because are, are we in this for what's better for, for our country, for our children? Mm -hmm. Are we in this to, to pass an inheritance down as a country that's better than what we received? Or are we just in it to do as much as we can for us and look as good as we can so we've got plastic faces and I can go around and brag about, you know, hey, I, I got in here and was able to shut down. And, mm -hmm, you know, and, mm -hmm. and then there's that percentage of the population that all they're going to do is just fight. Right? I mean, you can't please all the people all mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. We need good, strong leaders that have the courage to make a mistake and have the courage to admit that they made a mistake, but they're trying to drive people in the right direction. How do you feel? I'm, I look, I watch, and I kind of joke about Congress and the Senate because if you look at our leaders, oh my God, what a word. If you look at some of them, they can barely stay awake through session. Are you kidding me? These guys have been there way too long, done way too little, and taken way too much. And that's just me talking, my yeah. opinion. Only my opinion, nobody's opinion but mine. But if you watch them, if you watch them and you see at the end of session, what have they produced for you and for me and for our children? Nothing, no. absolutely nothing. They yeah. are accomplishing nothing. They are spending <coughs> money blowing it up a hog's tail, just like my granny would say. And they just keep blowing it, blowing it, blowing it. And, and this, the bills that they're passing are loaded with crap, and it is a bunch of crap. Yeah. And then we see homeless vets, we see U.S. Marshals being killed for $50,000 a year. We see men who would love to be police officers who can't feed a family on $36,000 a year for a local policeman. Yeah. Okay, can we go on and on and on and on and on? I was talking to somebody yesterday about how desperately Talking Rock needs to grow and Talking Rock can't grow until it has sewer. Sewer could be available if we tapped on to Jasper's and we came down 505 mm -hmm. and we tapped on and we came through to Talking Rock. Talking Rock is the sweetest little community. I absolutely mm -hmm. love it but it can't grow because all the little businesses are sitting on these tiny little lots nobody has sewer. Yeah. Do you know how much, how little money it would take to get sewer from Jasper's connection to Talking Rock? Pennies compared to what Congress will waste and blow up a hog's tail today. Today yeah. they will do something that will be, it will be millions and millions of dollars that they waste today. Well, here's the problem today. with that. Here's the problem with that, right? The little residents in Talking Rock don't have the resources to say, hey, I'll guarantee your kid a job if you'll pass right, this bill for exactly. Them. They're they just good folks. They don't They're have, just good yeah, folks. They don't have Wall Street lobbying money. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to be serving the American mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we need to focus our dollars here. But, but they're so good. You know, the government under the Obama administration removed the restriction of our federal government to use propaganda against the American people. And I'm telling you, propaganda works. Oh, yeah. Okay? Oh, I mean, yeah. it, it, it's proven, and they're so good oh, at it yeah. now compared to where they were before. I mean, news came out here recently that, anyway, I'm not gonna go all down that rabbit hole. But, you know, w they've done such a good job in the propaganda to get people to please other people. And, and again, it's a way that seems right for a man, but in the end it leads to death. Is, you know, oh, I'm a good person because I support this. Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is, is they're, pa they're, you know, they're patting you on the back uh, you know, they're patting you, they're shaking one hand, they're reaching around and pulling out of your pocket. So mm -hmm. that's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how we fix it because I think the system is really so far gone because once you get that corrupt individual at the top and they pull other corrupt people mm -hmm. up on both sides of the mm -hmm. aisle, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. both oh, sides yeah. of the oh, aisle. Yeah. Then you've surrounded yourself with corrupt people that, mm -hmm. that, that are serving themselves. Well, then guess what? So if you come up there and you're trying to be outside of that system, 
Well, it's like a country club, mm -hmm. right? They can vote you out. That's right. Hey, we're going to blackball right. that person because they, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not going to play the game that we yeah. want to play. So, you know, I don't, I don't know how it changes outside of, I told you this a long time ago, and we're worse than what we are now. Mm -hmm. you, you asked me, at what point does it change? And this was probably seven years ago, I mm -hmm. said, I don't think the American people have had enough pain yet. Mm -hmm. to we change. have today. We yeah. have today. I'm, I'm hearing people, yeah. Paul, who can't put food on the table. So they are just now experiencing the pain. But here's the thing that I'll tell you every path that we're going down is inflationary. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, we're going to end up in a hyperinflationary holocaust. Now, it may be 10 years from now, right? And that's the problem is most people will go, oh, I'm all worried about it now. But because it doesn't happen instantaneously, right, our memory tends to be very mm -hmm. short. Most mm -hmm. people don't pay attention to things over, over a 36 month period of time. So if you're somebody who's really trying to cause a lot of damage to our country, if you stretch it out over 10 years, it's like that frog in the boiling pot. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing that I'll tell you. Everything that we're doing is inflationary. If our leaders, and I believe that they have lit the fuse with the weaponization of our U.S. dollars, with the seizing, without due process. We didn't go to court. Mm -hmm. We just passed a pen that says we're going to seize the assets from Russia. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that I'm for them, right? Mm -hmm. but, but there has to be justice and integrity. So somewhere between 50 and 60 percent of the U.S. dollars are circulating overseas. If we lose our global reserve status mm -hmm. as our currency, those dollars have no reason to be overseas. So what are they going to do? They're going to come back into hard assets here. They're mm -hmm. going to come back into land. They're going to come back into farmland. They're going to come back into housing because those will hold their value better than printed money. Mm -hmm. And there is no conservative way to t protect yourself from hyperinflation. And go back and look at Argentina. Go back and look at Zimbabwe. Go back and look at Germany. And that's how Hitler ended up in mm -hmm. power mm -hmm. is because they had an inflationary holocaust mm -hmm. and the people had so much pain that they were willing to accept anybody Anything. who would tell them yeah. that they, what they yeah. wanted to hear. And, and what, we're, what you're experiencing right now and your grocery bills going up and your insurance bills going up and house prices reaccelerating again, that is inflationary. Mm -hmm. We printed too much money chasing too few goods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I lost a deal yesterday because the insurance went up so high, so I went back to the insurance company and I said, can we renegotiate this and can we do this? And they were great and they yeah. did help. They brought it down $400 a year. But at the same time, now we still don't qualify for this and we're still working on it and we're going to make it happen somehow, some way. But we shouldn't be fighting. We shouldn't be fighting to just buy a little home. We no. shouldn't be fighting to just buy a little home at seven and a quarter percent interest or whatever the interest is today. It's, it's crazy. We should not be in this position to have to fight to get this little bitty loan for this little bitty house. It, it shouldn't be happening. There's no way. But yeah. we set ourselves up for this mess because if you don't vote, you're responsible. If you do vote, you're, you're responsible. responsible. So it's your choice. And, yeah. and, and that's the thing. And I, I said, I don't know anybody who hasn't seen that we are totally being destroyed. If you watched the news last night with New York City bringing in the buses where they arrested the students from Columbia, did you see that? No, okay. I read an they article They brought in about two that. huge buses. They look like tour buses. Look yeah. like we were going to a, a big concert. They bring in two buses. They arrest all these kids that were in that hall where they had taken over the hall. And they interviewed them all and they had on those uh, towel heads. Towel heads, I'll get in trouble for that. Oh, I'll get in so much trouble. But anyway, <laughs> sure. they had those towels around their heads. Turbans, I think. Turbans, what that's what it was. Yeah, and, and they were all saying, it is our right to protest. It is our right to do this. It is our right. It is not your right to take over a college. It is not your right, right. To, to shut down roads. It is not your right to shut down a bridge. Yes, you can voice your opinion. I voice my opinion every time I sit down in this chair. And everybody knows what my opinion is. I'm, I'm truly a conservative. I'm truly... I truly believe that God will make all things right. And I believe that with every single fiber of me or I would be in prison for murder, I'm sure. Because when my daughter died, my, my soul said go after him and beat him to death with a baseball bat. But my soul that God controls mm -hmm. said no, it'll be okay. I hope I live to see it be okay. I hope I live to see him fry somewhere in a deep fryer. But 
I really could have been a criminal. I could have been a criminal just because that moment of anger when somebody scammed my daughter, she lost her home, and she ended her life. I could have become a criminal. But 12% of America commit 75% of the crime in America. Yeah. And we are at fault for allowing that to happen. Absolutely. We allow the judicial system to screw up every single day. When we say, well, bless his heart, he's done okay for the 90 days he's been in jail, let's let him out. And then we look at somebody who made a stupid mistake as a teenager and we send them up for 10 years. Yeah. I've seen it happen both ways. Yeah. And it scares me to death. The, the judicial system terrifies me. I'm, I, I don't ever want to go before a judge or a court because you don't know how it's going to go. Yeah. You know, somebody may be sympathetic that you beat that man with a baseball bat because he killed your child. And some people may not be. You know, yeah. we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. And, and it's, it's scary. Remember who said um, an eye for an eye? Yeah, a tooth for a tooth. Yes, yeah. yes. That and, was, and, yeah. And, and that's how we used to live because yeah. we used to believe that you do right and you do wrong and you do wrong and you pay the price. Right. We don't see that anymore. No. We almost reward wrong. Does that make sense? No, we actually do reward wrong. Yeah, it's okay? crazy. I mean, we're, we're going to forgive the student loans of people who go borrow money to go on spring break and get right. drunk and live a hedonistic lifestyle. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna, to uh, take money from the taxpayers to forgive loans for people who, had, who go into a job, that, uh, a degree that they didn't do, do the research to determine, no. yeah. you know, the steps that they were going in and they've got their hand out, right? They got a degree in something that they could never get a job in. Right. Never. Right. Never. But um, so it, it's a frustrating thing, but here's the thing. This is human nature, okay? Good times create weak people. They create weak people. It's normal in all of our lives, right? We become complacent. We don't pay attention to things. Marriages fall apart because people take each other for granted. They fall apart for a lot more reasons for mm -hmm. that. But, you know, you get complacent, we get arrogant, we become prideful, and pride comes before the fall. So here's the thing. Too many American people are so prideful and they're so inept, they're so uneducated when it comes to history. And I'm talking about long-term history, right? Mm -hmm. The one thing about the Bible, if you read the Bible front to back, is that's the history that God wants us to know. And there's there's lessons that are in there. But the one thing that you pay attention to is, you know, they, God brings them out of Egypt, parts the Red Sea, you know, whether you believe that's metaphorical or, or literal. Mm -hmm. The reality is whatever it was, I, I, I lean towards the literal, was unbelievably magnificent. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, you know, the Israelites are, are worshiping a golden calf. Then, then God provides for them in the desert for 40 years and they get to the promised land. They're like, oh, we can't do this, mm -hmm. right? So there's fear that motivates people mm -hmm. and there's pride and hedonism and greed. lust and greed. greed. That's our human nature. Yeah. The job of our government is set up a society to where you have boundaries in there that look, if you cross that boundary, it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You cross that boundary here are the consequences. Mm -hmm. But what we have today is we've got a weaponization of the, of the justice system. And, and here's the thing that concerns me. The left's doing it, but I wouldn't put it past the right to do it. Because mm -hmm. you've got the extreme left over here, mm -hmm. and then you've got the extreme right, and then you've got what I believe is the large majority of Americans whose both parties have left them, and mm -hmm. they just don't know what to do mm -hmm. because they're focused on trying to do a good job for the customers that they serve. They're trying mm -hmm. to do a good job for the clients they serve. They're trying to watch out for their families and they're trying to have a little bit of fun in between. Mm -hmm. and, and what I'm hearing consistently across the board is, look, I'm making good money and I'm trying hard, but I feel like I can't get ahead. Well, you can't get ahead when the government's printing so much money right. that the value of your savings don't even keep up with, with mm -hmm. inflation. Mm -mm. Now, mm -mm. I got to thinking about this the other day because I sit around a lot and just think. Like, I, I love to get on the tractor. I came home last night. I, I was on the phone from... 6.30 in the morning until 6.30 in the evening. And uh, I told Holly, I'm like, I love you, honey, and I know we want to sit down because we always eat dinner together. I said, but I got to get outside. I, I, the sun's shining. I got to get outside. I was thinking, I'm like, what are we missing in society right now? And this is what concerns me on where we are. 
and there'll be road markers along the way. So it's not something that we really need to make a major decision about. But I hear a lot of people that are kind of panic purchasing homes right now because prices are starting to move again. Mm -hmm. And their belief is I can't make this, I can't really afford this payment because there's things you can pay for that you can't afford, mm -hmm. right? You might mm -hmm. can make payments for 12 or 24 months, but you really can't afford it in your mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We know that about 75% of, of the population is priced out of the median home right now. Absolutely. Um, how in the world do any of our kids come back? I mean, I had a client the other day that their kids t together are making about 175000 a year. Mm -hmm. They're trying to find a home in this area and they can't find a home that mm -hmm. they can afford. That's right. right. That's insane. It is insane. So, uh, but you've got institutional money that's chasing. You've got the stock market that's stretching out at all-time historical highs. So real estate is, is overextended. The stock market is overextended. And the government's been telling us for two years that inflation is transitory. The ch Fed chairman came out in February. They seem to be desperate to cut interest rates. But yet inflation is sticky and it continues to be high. You've got geopolitical issues that are taking place. What if, what if the government can't slam rates down to 2%? If they do in this environment, your food cost, insurance costs, and everything else is going to go through the roof. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, unless we have a major economic calamity to suck that system out of the, out of the economy, because if, if you had a stock market decline of 50% right now, that sucks all that excess money because, because people think somebody get that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've got stock A that's priced at 100 and then the next thing it sells because there's no buyers left and it opens up at 50. Mm -hmm. Somebody didn't keep that $50 in between. That money vanished from the system. The same thing on the other side. If it just grows, it puts money back in the system. So I'm not saying that's going to happen. But, but at some point in the next 12, 24, 60 months, something has to break. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. has to break. Or I, or I believe that the American people are going to step out. Are, are going to step in and stuff up. And, and I don't know what the answer is. I, I don't. I, I don't. Do, I, do your children own their own homes now or are they renting? No. Who's doing so, that? Uh, Katie and Tyler, um, he just got accepted to medical school. Mm -hmm. That is and, awesome. Yeah. So, congratulations. So, he starts, awesome. uh, he starts in Athens. I think they move in in July. They're living with us right now. Their, mm -hmm. their apartment came up. Mm -hmm. And I've advised them to wait it out. Sure. I'm like I'm, I'm yeah. like look here's the thing, yeah you, you, technically you're going to be throwing away some rent here in the interim yeah, period. Yeah, but do but it. But look, it. you're in medical school. You don't know where you're going to be. If prices go sideways for four or five years, you know we're to we're at we're to we're to point of maximum efficiency. That doesn't mean that they can't go higher because if you have international money mm -hmm. that starts flooding back into the U.S., mm -hmm. just like Canada, go look at Canadian mm -hmm. prices. Mm -hmm. Chinese investors can come in and buy Canadian. So that's another thing that I wish we would do. Only U.S. citizens can buy land mm -hmm. or homes or farmland. Mm -hmm. that, that's a national security risk mm -hmm. if you have a, a foreign entity reinvesting dollars back in. So unless you're a U.S. citizen, you can't buy it. I told you the story about, golly, Dawn was 13 when a Chinese conglomerate came in and her grandfather had passed to settle his estate. They sold a corner in Cumming, Georgia. And then when they paid this ridiculous price, I thought, something's up with these Chinese people. She was 13, she's 50 now. Yeah. You know how many years ago that was? Yeah. They 37. were here then buying up property. It was a commercial corner near the cattle barn. And I Smart thought, why are point. they doing this? And it, they've still not developed it. It's still sitting there. And I watch it all the time because I'm like, what are they gonna do with this? But they they paid way more than anybody local would have paid. And everybody said, how did y'all get that much money? And I said, yeah. the grace of God, because her daddy owed me 29,000 back support. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but that was 37 years ago that they paid that much money. Yeah. And it was way overpriced. And we knew it was, but it was trying to settle an estate and everybody wanted more, more money than yeah. it was worth. And we, they actually got it Well, without getting to a in, Chinese conglomerate. Without getting into all the details, you know, the Chinese government has the ability to institute capital controls. A lot of Chinese investors want to get their money out of the country because they're a communist mm -hmm, regime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll just seize your assets, right? Mm -hmm. so, so a lot of them have been buying in Australia. A lot of them have been buying in... Uh, Canada, a lot of them have buy, been buying in the United States. I don't fault them for doing that. I mm -hmm. understand why they're mm -hmm. doing it. But 
but when you take the sheer amount of the population, the sheer amount of U.S. dollars that are in China because of the trade deficit that we've had over there, they've had a trade surplus with us, us a deficit with them. Um, that's a lot of money that can come back here and price out our, especially if there's 50 percent of uh, dollars that are overseas. Now, here's the thing I want to tell y'all. Sometimes I get on here and I feel like negative Nelly. I'm like, Sherry, I am not so negative, and, and, and I am not. Okay, so here's the thing. I am probably one of the most optimistic people that you'll ever run into. And if you're, you know, you see me outside of this conversation, I really am. But I also believe in Proverbs that says the prudent foresee danger and hide themselves and the simple pass on and are judged for it, okay? I also have raised my kids and operated under the belief, learn from the mistakes of other people, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also am a voracious reader of history. I love to read about history. We're not taught that really in school. Mm -hmm. Look, I had a great history teacher in high school, but I had no desire to read history in high school. It was mm -hmm. only when, when the, the responsibility, the sheer responsibility that I have for those people that I serve, right? Like, like a substantial number of them, I'm advising them on their life savings, mm -hmm. okay? I know what risks will take them out. I know what returns that they need to be able to be successful. And when you study history, it gives you wisdom. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that, that, that the Bible goes on to say is with much wisdom comes much sorrow. Now, do I have a lot of wisdom? I have no clue. I ask the Lord every day to give it to me. Half the time I feel like the biggest dumb butt on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. But the reality is if you're, if you're, you're prudently walking and, and, and we're exercising, this is a period of time in our lives, in our society, that things are going really, really good, right? And we're tested in our faith I believe when things are good. You're not tested, yeah, you're tested in your poverty, poverty, but that pride and that arrogance and that greed comes on in our wealth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. that, that's when people do the worst things is when they're in a position of power mm -hmm. and they have tons of money rolling through. That's when they, they wake up one morning and they're like, how did I end up here? When it, especially if God disciplines them. Mm -hmm. We're in a period of time right now too where I don't believe God's disciplining this nation. Mm -hmm. He's disciplining individuals and that's a great thing because God says he disciplines those that he uh, loves but it also tells us that he'll turn us over to a reprobate mind I'm not quoting that exactly and then we'll suffer the consequences or we'll eat the mm -hmm. fruit of our behavior and I, mm -hmm. and I believe because we have not had a divine judgment on our country we've had warnings that we ignored um, that 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 we may be fully released down this path. Mm -hmm. So the reason I'm trying to warn people is because there, there are those that will need to be in a position and need to have the mental strength, the integrity, the courage to speak the truth, to be a light to our society on the other side of this, to help people navigate. Because I don't know when it comes. That's the thing that's impossible. I, Look, I maybe see the path that we are, and it may be 15 years from now, mm -hmm. maybe 15 months from now. But when that pain comes, we need those people that recognize in the midst of great chaos is incredible opportunity. Okay? And those same, you know, the, the weak men who lead to hard times. And I think we talked about this mm -hmm. last time. Jordan mm -hmm. Peterson. And, and look. I, oh, i got to ask you, but we're, we're going to yeah. take a commercial okay. break and one song because I want to share this one song with y'all. And when we come back, we got to talk about Jordan Peterson. Oh, yeah, yeah. But tell me, finish your thought and then we'll do so, that. So uh, anyway, the, the point being is the hard times come and then that shapes a society to focus on integrity and honesty and truth to demand politicians that are going to serve the people and not their own pockets mm -hmm. and the people are involved right and then that brings about good times and we would love to live to see some good times wouldn't yeah. we yes I, I wanna, yeah. we're going to take a commercial break and then we're going to do one song from the Kimsey Ridge singing that uh, it was awesome and, and Tim has got it edited ready to go and you will get to see it in its entirety here on ETC. Compliments of the Sherry Show. So here you go.
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Aw, oh, Daddy. <laughs> I grown up, grown up, in every way, way in every way, way care and take care of you. in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. have church. Amen. He jumped once, once my home, I was a slave. Helpless and sin did wrong, love life did claim until I looked up to heaven's throne. Christ came to save. up in Canaan right now. Satan may have you bound with every strong. Move up to higher grounds. Will not be long to 
Christ the Savior, your soul is found. You'll sing this song I'm leaving in Canaan now. Living on Canaan's side, he jumped behind. Crossed over Jordan wide, gladness divine. My soul is satisfied. No longer I am blind, living with Jesus up in Canaan right now. He jumped behind, crossed over Jordan wide, gladness to find. My soul is satisfied. My soul is satisfied. My soul is satisfied. Living with Jesus up in Canaan, right Hey, well, I love the fact that y'all are going to get to see that whole concert. You didn't have to drive all the way to Ducktown like I did from Ball Ground, Georgia. <laughs> but it was awesome to be there, and what a great facility. I'm so excited to share that with y'all. Now, Paul, we know time is closed. We've only got like eight minutes left. But when we look at America today, everybody knows who I'm going to vote for, and I wear a red shirt the last 30 days of the election, of course, <laughs> to remind y'all how to vote not to hold up signs every day, but I may do that too. But, but we are in a situation that we can come out of this, but it's gonna take a long, hard work because we've been taken down to nothing. Yeah. And I believe that intentionally, we were taken down to nothing to control us and to get us, you need an EBT card and you need to answer to us for this and you need to answer to us. I believe that they intentionally brought us down. Yeah, it's a globalist. I mean, when you look at it, so um, the World Economic Forum wants a global digital currency, mm -hmm. and they're moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, you could really lay out a timeline where, where it'll be about 10 years, but, um, and that's, that's, that's a terrifying thing because in the wrong hands, you've got the ability for somebody to lock you completely out of the system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so th th this is the best of times. Wealth mm -hmm. levels in America are the highest that they've ever been, mm -hmm. right? Interest rates are earning decent returns on your money. What if is you have CD money. now? Well, I mean, money market rates that, that well, I'm parked in a money market rate yeah. paying 5% right now. Okay, okay. So I don't know what they're paying anywhere else because mm -hmm. I haven't been able to find anything mm -hmm. that high, but uh, that's what we've got the ability to offer. Um, now that could change at any point. Mm -hmm. Rates go up, it'll change because money markets change every seven days. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, on, on many hands, this is the best of times, right? People can buy nice cars. They're getting big houses. People got. How can you buy a nice car? The car I want is eighty-two thousand dollars. Well, that's that's as much as the first two houses I bought put together. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. One car. That's inflation too. One car. That's inflation too. I was like, what? <laughs> so. Um, but uh, you would mentioned something about Jordan Peterson, so I was yes, curious what you yes, want to ask. Yes, yes, tell me, so, tell me, tell me. Yeah, so I've got, I will take five minutes on this. So uh, for those of you who didn't get a chance to find out, last month Holly had surprised me. And it was funny because she's always wanted me to do a staycation. I wanted to stay home and work on the farm. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of frustrated to begin with because I, I never wanted to do a staycation. Now I wanted to do a staycation, and she bought me surprise tickets. But yeah. I was really happy. We went to Nashville, yes. spent a couple of nights together. Much needed break that yeah. I didn't realize that I needed. Yeah. And we went to see Jordan Peterson on his "We Who Wrestle with God" tour. Uh -huh. And I also was introduced to Constantine Kissin, I believe is his name, for the first time. Mm -hmm. He came out of Russia, young guy. I've listened to him on a couple of things. Very interesting, but. Uh, so there was approximately 7,000 people there, mm -hmm. and it was one of the most enjoyable events that I've ever been to. Wow. I'm so glad you got to go. And, and uh, because he got up there, oh my gosh, he's animated, but he spent two hours sharing his thoughts on Genesis chapter 1. Wow. And when he got finished... Genesis chapter 1 has the answers to solve all the problems that we have in society today. Literally. And he's, he picked it apart. This is something he's been thinking on for because some Eve time. Because Eve was evil? Uh, what's <laughs> did, that? It, did it start because Eve was evil? No, it didn't. <laughs> no, Actually, okay. so what he, I figured they'd blame it on a woman. <laughs> no, no. 
So what he started out with is he said, he said, you know, the man is just as wrong as what Eve was. It was a failure of both mm -hmm. because, you know, Eve was deceived, mm -hmm. right? Because the man wasn't leading. Mm -hmm. And he talked about just how God makes men and women different, mm -hmm. right? How funny that this week men are decided to be softies and, and in the Bible they yeah. were taught to lead. Well, I mean, it's kind of one of the things he pointed out. Adam was soft, you know, mm -hmm. because once... Once God discovered them, he's like, that wife you gave me, that woman you gave mm -hmm. me, you know, she, uh -huh. like, like, mm -hmm. and what, blame the, her. what the most yeah. men do. When yeah. they fail, they, met, they blame it's somebody, somebody else. It's somebody else's fault, yes. You know, and yes. I was sitting there just like, wow. You know, it was interesting because <laughs> in front of us we had this lady, and I apologize, this is stereotyping, but she had like pink and purple hair and all that stuff. So I was like, man, we're going to see a protest here. Yeah. And, uh, and she looked at her boyfriend at the end of it. She's like, I had never heard anybody explain it that way. That completely changed my view of the way I see the world. Oh, wow. And uh, so here's the funny part. So I'm trying to pay attention to time. Yeah. So we get done. And I have the, un I have a very, it's a blessing and a curse, an ability to have unbelievable focus for extended periods of time. To the point that my kids make fun of me. If I'm texting a client or I'm texting somebody, like you can have a conversation with me and I will not hear a word you're saying because I'm focused on that. So I'm focused mm -hmm. on, you know, Jordan Peterson mm -hmm. listening to every word he says. Couldn't disagree with anything that he came up with and I look for reasons to disagree mm -hmm. with. And uh, so we get done, it's about 9.30 at night. We're walking out, having conversations with people, you know, overhearing conversations with people like, like, wow. Yeah. And there were some young men next to us that drove all the way from Montana to Nashville, Tennessee to say wow. yes. Wow. So anyway, with that being said, we get out. I'm like, hey, Holly, we're downtown Nashville now. I'm that. I'm way too old to be spending the night downtown Nashville. I just, I've never enjoyed the party scene. I don't enjoy yeah. that. I like yeah. listening to music. But I said, hey, you want to go, you know, sit down at one of these clubs and listen to it? And she said, I am worn out. I want to go back to the hotel room yeah. and go to, go to bed. Okay. Because she said it was so intense and she was listening to everything that he said. And there were several other people when we were walking back to our hotel that were like, I am worn out. Like that yeah. was intense. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you, so he, so here's the thing that we discovered. He was in Nashville and he had the group together. I think it was Jonathan Prager, uh, no, Dennis Prager, Jonathan Pajot and several others. And they're doing, he did a, a round table on Exodus here recently and they're doing a round table on the gospels. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just fascinating. And wow. then, then of course they announced that, oh my gosh, what's his name? He's a real popular atheist. Um, oh, uh, I bet Vicky watches it just, him. It just, I just lost the name, but he's a major atheist, and he came out and said that he's determined that he's a cultural Christian now. And I that, know who you're talking about. That, I heard her talking about Y'all, I wish, I wish that I could Duh, just speak back to me because I'm like, I know the name, and I just can't bring it to mind. It's not Zacharias Dishon. Uh, um, we'll do it next month yeah we'll, we'll, we'll make anyway, notes yeah you know and he had a conversation about that because he's like look you know jordan peterson said look he he's an atheist but he is a very intelligent individual and he finally understands the biblical principles and why it's so good for our society mm -hmm. tell the truth don't steal don't kill you know um uh, treat your neighbor as yourself you know forgiveness mm -hmm. honor mm -hmm. lord your god that's what built the greatness honor your of our parents. society. Honor your parents. Honor your parents. That's yeah. what built the greatness of our society. Mm -hmm. And there's also justice associated mm -hmm. with that, right? There's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You can be forgiven of what you've done, but mm -hmm. you still have to suffer the consequences mm -hmm. of what you did. That's right. Look at the time. We wrapped up. You with know, 60 we could do left. two hours every, every time. Thank you for being here again today. It's my honor. If you need any kind of personal financial advice, pick up the phone and call Kiker Wealth Management, and Paul's team will lead you to a meeting with him. And and uh, I think he can make a difference in your life. And this, I hope we're going to talk about in the next day or so, because this is this is happening up in Copper Hill, Tennessee. It's the House of Glory, and this is giving lives back to women who possibly lost a lot of their life because of a drug addiction. And I want to share this with y'all when I come back in just a day or so. But remember, National Day of Prayer tomorrow in Ball Ground. Please come and join us at 9 a.m. at the Wheeler House. I look forward to seeing you there. And it's time to get out of here. Bye, y'all. <laughs>